Good morning, if you've just joined us, this is Africa News Network First Fast Live. My name is Cindy Mabi, our top story this hour. ESCOM has fought back the smear campaign against the power utility and ESCOM's contract with Tegeta came under scrutiny at the Standing Committee on Public Accounts in Parliament. The power utility, represented by Board Chairman Dr. Ben Ngubane and CEO Brian Mulefe, defended the contract with Tegeta. Members of Parliament questioned the Board on whether due processes were overlooked while awarding the core contract to Tegeta. ESCOM officials explained that all due processes were followed and Tegeta met all the required conditions. Members of Parliament were told that most of the recommendations made by the accounting firm PwC were implemented. There is an allegation from the, the same report from the PwC report that you as ESCOM did not follow, that is your supply chain management, that is particularly on the Tegeta that is uh, coal mine, or in the big, what do you call that, brick fountain that, that is called mine. <coughs> is that correct? In terms of the PwC report uh, that has been highlighted, they have highlighted certain uh, contract management issues associated with the award of the contract to Tegeta, which we have addressed, as we've said. And uh, legal opinion at this stage would indicate that we are comfortably compliant with both um, uh, the supply chain framework from National Treasury as well as our PFMA requirements in terms of fair, equitable, cost-effective and transparent. The information is that there were no competitive bidding. And the question is why this preferential treatment to Tegeta? Why was Tegeta exonerated from following due process, due diligence in this ring? ESCOM has never had a culture of doing competitive bids. It is something that we have just introduced. And uh, those companies that happen to be white-owned companies acquired, they are doing business with ESCOM. Over the last five years, it was $74 billion, and there were no competitive bids. And so in 2008, this issue of the emergency supplies was also introduced, and we have just changed it. Our idea is to move away. We have got an instruction from the minister to stop doing cost plus mines and to introduce black economic empowerment and competitive bids. A letter written by the acting provincial head of Mpumalanga 2016. Conclusion. It can be concluded that to get the resources and exploration, uh, PTY Limited does not comply with some of the conditions of a water use license. This is in 2016. Now, can somebody explain to me how do you have a valid water use license if you've not complied, and this is signed by the department, in 2016? Departments conduct repeated visits to mining sites to check exactly whether the person who holds the mining license is complying in every respect with the requirements. So it doesn't mean once I've got a water use license, I can just be seen as having complied completely. There will be further inspections to show whether, in fact, I'm still complying. It's really up to DMR and Water Affairs to bring sanctions to the owner of the mining rights when they fail to comply. And here's how ESCOM dismissed allegations against the power utility. Firstly, uh, ESCOM says there was no competitive bidding or due process in the awarding of the Tegeta contract. ESCOM responded that it never did a competitive bids before 2008 and it's now been introduced uh, for BEE compliance. And the second allegation is that the Tegeta contract appears to have been compiled hastily by copying and pasting sections from other contracts. And ESCOM responds by saying that all four contracts checked by PwC had a cut and paste issue. It was an administrative issue. The third allegation is that ESCOM did not follow supply management procedures on awarding the Tegeta contract. ESCOM responded that it's comfortably compliant with Treasury's supply chain management and the Public Financial Management Act requirements. The fourth allegation is that ESCOM unlawfully authorized repayment to Tegeta for coal supply, but ESCOM says repayments have been granted to all coal companies, including Exaro. And allegation number five is that ESCOM didn't perform a combustion test before signing the contract with Tegeta. 
And the power utility says combustion tests are not a once-off. They are a continual process and done all the time. The other allegation is that health and safety evaluation was conducted only after the Tegeta contract was signed. But ESCOM responds by saying that uh, actual health and safety evaluation is usually done after a mine is in operation. The other allegation is that load shedding is used as an excuse by ESCOM to award the uh, contract to Tegeta. But uh, ESCOM says that load shedding could become a reality if ESCOM can't get coal contracts approved. Public Enterprises Minister Lynn Brown reiterated her decision to refer all coal, coal contracts in the last 10 years to be investigated by the Special Investigative Unit. I and Tegeta will be part of that process. It's an imminent um, um, investigation. It will be completely independent um, in that it's within the SIU and it will be overseen in terms of what the recommendations are that come out of that um, um, by, I hope, a retired judge. And those recommendations will either go to the N MPA or back into the company so that the company is able to fix itself. ESCOM, it's a uh, sort of 20, 30, 40 year contracted mines that has been given to people 20, 30, 40 years ago. And that, those mines, um, the land, the machinery, the labor, everything is paid for by ESCOM. We're, we're, and these people just pay a management fee to ESCOM. So we have to relook everything. We have to relook the fact that 2008 was load shedding, they had to get quick, um, um, they had to get quick coal. Um, and that then became a process that they used. And joining us live in studio, Tsepo Khadima, political analyst, and Kulu Pasiwe, ESCOM spokesperson. Good evening, Mr. Khadima in studio, and Kulu, thanks so much for joining us. Let's just start with you. Why is this prepayment uh, such a contentious issue, especially if the same advance had been extended to other coal companies? Kulu. Hi, Kulu. Hi, hi, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good evening. Ngeti, why, why is this uh, prepayment uh, of a uh, call, or rather, to, to get uh, such a contentious issue if this has been standard practice and advanced to other coal, uh, coal companies? Well, it is not clear to us, at least, as to why this matter has been so contentious. In fact, today in Parliament, we were at pain to explain to parliamentarians that we do have other contracts that have been having the same kind of uh, arrangements before, but uh, it looks like uh, the, the, the focal point really is on this contract. And we as ESCOM are actually glad that the Minister of Public Enterprises has instituted an inquiry into this matter so that we can uh, hopefully get to the bottom of this matter and ultimately show that there was nothing untoward with this contract. Yeah, I mean, there's generally been uh, scrutiny for state-owned entities for as long as memory serves. But why do you feel that there's a smear campaign of uh, ESCOM, considering that at any given opportunity you had submitted the required uh, responses and documentation? See, uh, the, the ESCOM board, together with management, were showing the parliamentarians that over the last five years, we have spent about uh, um, 94 billion rand on uh, the, the so-called cost plus mines. This cost plus mines, essentially, among others, include the, the ones run by Anglo American, Exar, and uh, South 32, where we, 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 we put the cost up front, which is uh, what some people call a prepayment, so that we can secure coal and also to make sure that, that they, they run their operations uh, um, to the to their best, and especially for the qualities of coal and the volumes that we need. So what we were saying today was that this is standard practice, and not only does, does ESCOM do the same uh, 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 sort of practice with uh, this other company, but in other industries as well, if you need some certain products, sometimes there's a requirement for you to put up uh, upfront payment so that you can secure your goods. Yeah, please stay on the line. Uh, let's engage Seppo Harima. Thanks and good evening, uh, Seppo. But just the, the whole competitive bidding process, which we know is standard with the Public Finance Management Act and the Supply Chain Management Act, that due processes need to be followed. But that had never existed in ESCOM in the first place until recently due to BE compliance. 
Why so much emphasis on whether this particular contract uh, had the bidding process when others essentially were just appointed? It would appear to me that the parliamentarians have taken the approach of doing things right, even if they are the wrong things. So you can do the wrong thing right. And there are a number of wrong things that they are demanding that be done right. But first and foremost, they are wanting to give an impression that uh, PFMA, it is the panacea. It is a panacea for all matters procurement. And it cannot be because various areas are very specialized. If we were to look at coal, for example, coal is very, very specialized. You have to look at the physical and the chemical properties of the coal based on the boiler that is calibrated to burn a specific type of coal. And hence all the various things. But what I found very puzzling is that the scoper today, they didn't seem to have taken due care to at least educate themselves on the intricacies of a matter that they were going to be adjudicating over today, which by their own assertion is exceedingly important for our country. I got a clear impression that they didn't know what is the difference between a megajoule and a gigajoule. They didn't know how that adds into a tonnage of coal. They don't even know what are the efficiencies. They don't know why do you do a combustion test and what are the intervals and what is the importance of that. They speak about water. Now, ESCOM, for example, when they introduced the issue of a water use right as a demand, that was a mistake in that process. But if you do not understand that you do not need water, you don't need to wash the coal, coal that gets supplied to ESCOM, you then go on that line of questioning that they've been going on. So in any, if anything, I think they've done us a disservice. But what is even more worrying is for them, when having received a report that was commissioned, or an audit report that was commissioned by ESCOM, then for them to have singled out one party when there were four companies that were sampled. And this is not like those are the only companies. It was a sample. So it <clears throat> begs the question, with the, at the end of this process, what do they hope will be done with their reports? Because they seem to have prejudged the matter and they are going to sink in court. Now, if you've got members of parliament who do not even appreciate the legal implications in terms of how they are approaching these matters, then I'm more worried. But if they had just visited one or two power stations before today's proceedings, it would have been helpful for them because they were at sea on very critical issues and they painted a picture that is unfortunate that at the end of the day is purely because of their limited understanding and that naivete on or ignorance rather of the industry that they are trying to go make very uh, fundamental uh, judgment calls on it is unforgivable. They should have at least done their homework and we, that we expect better of our members of parliament. Let them educate themselves because their line of questioning, judge a man or a woman by the questions they ask, not by the answers they give. And the questions that they were asking, they left me more worried. Yeah, Kulu, are you also of the view that uh, the members of parliament, uh, or a scoper at least, uh, tended to go with the narrative that is already in the public domain. I think it's Genesis, one could even say, is part of the State of Capture a report by a former advocate, uh, Tulima Donzella. Did you get that sense that it wasn't uh, as an exercise to get to the bottom of issues? It was already presumption uh, in, 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 in uh, uh, guilt finding of ESCOM. Well, um, Cindy, I think uh, Mr. Khadima has more latitude than I do in terms of uh, making uh, some of these uh, uh, um, speculations that he's making. And uh, I, I, I sort of uh, cannot uh, fault him. But from our side as a company, because we are state-owned, all we are saying is if anyone, including this committee and any act that will be established in the future, if they want to know anything about how we run our business, we will always avail ourselves so that we can answer the questions that they require. And if they need to visit any of our power stations to see as to how we, we do business, then we can also make that uh, um, um, uh, with those processes easier for them. As a matter of fact, in the next few weeks or days, some of the committee members are visiting Kusile power station. But it is not about this specific matter. It's just for them to sort of uh, see as to how far we are in terms of our building program. But generally, if anyone wants anything, uh, wants to, to know any more about our business, we will make ourselves available. 
so that we can uh, bring them up to speed. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you commissioned the PwC first and second report of which uh, a legal order applied. You had uh, applied to a rather legal opinion you had complied with. Uh, to a large extent, and yet you you still penalised for that very action. What what is it that is that the uh, scope of parliamentarians didn't find satisfactory about the PwC report and your compliance? Well, and that, that was our contention. First of all, to say that the National Treasury has been doing an investigation on ESCOM contract since July of 2015, and uh, ESCOM itself had uh, commissioned this report. Uh, the this is uh, audit by, by uh, a PwC, and you're correct, and Mr. Karima is also correct. This was not some investigation or whatever. It was an audit by, which was commissioned by ESCOM to see to it that uh, the processes that we follow, whether they, they, were, they will be able to be stress-tested to, to spend the test of time. So this was an internal mechanism to make sure that we self-correct. And now this report that was meant to be our own internal uh, 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 report, it is now being used as if it was something that has been found out on ESCOM, whereas we are the ones who commissioned it so that we can make sure that uh, our processes are not found wanting. All right, please stay on the line. We're joined by Botsang Muilo, our political analyst. Good evening to you, Botsang, and thanks so much for joining us. Just see the happenings in Scopa today uh, regarding the ESCOM Q&A. Um, I don't know which one came out uh, the, the better or the, the wiser because it, uh, ESCOM has been consistent in saying that they have complied with the very recommendations from the PwC report and yet we keep going back and forth to the initial report when there were uh, areas of mismanagement or whatever concerns were there. Uh, good evening, Cindy, and good evening to my colleagues and the viewers of you know, Cindy, it's very surprising how parliamentary committees work, as well as COPA. They actually found their own rules and regulations. We have a situation here whereby there was a third inquiry regarding ESCOM maladministration and mismanagement. And out of that finding, it was agreed and concluded that there must be an investigation, there must be an audit report which was conducted by an appointed professional audit company, which produced a report. And in that report, it cleared ESCOM of any maladministration or wrongdoing. The ESCOM board, as well as the ESCOM executives, they have over and over, as you have correctly said, have said to the public, have said to parliament and to government, here is the audit report that was conducted by the appointed PwC or whatever company. Here are the findings or the outcome of that report. We stick by this report. We complied and we supplied all the information which was required by the officially appointed auditors. Now, we are back to square one, whereby parliament of Copa, they want to disregard the findings of an officially appointed company that came with an audit report of ESCOM. They want to disregard it. And, and it's very sad that the parliamentary committee wants to base their investigation and questioning in parliament based on what the media is saying about ESCOM, not on what official government documents are saying about ESCOM. Why would they want to rely about speculations from the opposition party, about speculations from the media, when the official report is on the table with facts of what transpired at ESCOM? It's not understandable. It is not known. Why do they want to do that? But contrary, in the end, the listeners of years of Yemen seven, contrary, copper itself, it has a case again at hand, whereby there is an audit report of the Treasury, which Copper ignored, and again relied on media reports regarding Treasury and how the Treasury has been well managed, well oiled, and well administered. When the official report that has exposed, you know, contravention of rules and regulations, corruption within the Treasury, is being ignored by Copper. Now, are we having a standing committee on public accounts relying on media reports and sensational news? when actually the country is supposed to rely on audit reports and official reports of government. As has put everything on the table, mm. nobody of the opposition, but the from any other public spending committee has come up and said, ESCOM, you have failed or lied or contravened the rules on A, B, C, D, and E. None of them have done that. The official report is exonerating the board of ESCOM. 
Mr. Ngubane, or Professor Ngubane, who is the, the chairperson of the board of FCOM, has come up and said the documents are here. They are access to the public. They are mm. official reports of FCOM, but they are being ignored. And that is very worrying. Why would Papa do that? Yeah, but I'm just on the line, please. Sepo, this is an earlier question I posed to Kulu, and understandably, mm. uh, he has to be impartial on this. But what role then does the, the big players or the coal monopoly play in what is going on at ESCOM and particularly their reputation uh, in the, the, the public? Well, look, I think we, we are in for a difficult time, but my, my reflection on it is the following, that the old adage goes, every good deed will not go unpunished. So we are certainly seeing that the good that the board and the executive management of ESCOM have been doing, at least in the last two years, they are being punished and they are being punished thoroughly, though unjustly. What are they being punished for? When Mr. Mulefe arrived, ESCOM was spending one billion rand a month on diesel, which was translating to four rand fifty cents per kilowatt hour cost of production of electricity, when the inherent cost for ESCOM is at 79 cents per kilowatt hour. You do the math. We saw two companies, Glencore, that was demanding 450 rand a ton instead of the 150 rent a ton. And Mr. Mulefe not only cut the 1 billion rent a month that ESCOM was hemorrhaging, he stopped the payment of an additional 300 rent per ton. We also saw the one of the cost plus miners, uh, Exaro, that was demanding a, or was being paid rather, 1,132 rent per ton. And we now know as a matter of cost today that that cost has been reduced all the way down to 570 rent a ton. So that saving per ton, well, almost 600 rand a ton, Mr. Mulefe has been punished for that together with the board for having taken those uh, bold decisions. We saw that today, ESCOM has got 27% of its coal amongst the various because they've been this drive to reduce the uh, concentration in the four major players. And now, of course, we are seeing corporate activity with those four major players in terms of various asset sales, except that those asset sales that of their various uh, uh, coal mines, they effectively are going to be financed through debt, which in turn means that the new owners are effectively going to be glorified slaves of the very same uh, companies or the banks that, of course, are party to this. So effectively what we are seeing here is that we would appreciate, I believe, by and large as South Africans, parliament that at least can be supportive. For example, Parliament has not even asked a simple question about the 10 billion rent that ESCOM has lost today due to the independent power producers who again are charging well over 2 rand 18 cents per kilowatt hour averaged when the inherent cost is 79 cents per kilowatt hour. Exaro was paid 3 billion rand without delivering a wheelbarrow of coal and we hear the same parliamentarians today saying, 4 billion rent over 10 years, disregarding the fact that the Brackfontaine colliery does not supply that power station with all its coal. In fact, it's one of the four suppliers into that power station. It means Brackfontaine cannot even run one power station for a month, and yet they are making it the bigger issue without really acknowledging the good work that has been done to date. And I'm saying they should not be disruptive. They must be supportive because we are seeing an ESCOM that is more stable and an ESCOM that has seen the era of some of the historical processes, which, by the way, predates the current leadership. So why are we not applauding this leadership? Why is it so difficult to applaud this leadership for the good work that they are doing? It is beyond me, but it's going to imperil us. ESCOM must go to court to force Treasury that they sign the agreements because we cannot economically afford to go into load shedding by them refusing ESCOM to sign new coal supply agreements, which they very much need to continue keeping the lights on. All right, we're going to have to leave it there, Tepo. As always, an education in uh, coal and uh, energy security. Much appreciated. Tepo Khadima, political analyst, and Kulu Pasiwe is ESCOM spokesperson. But Zang Muilwa, a political analyst, and you at home, as always, we enjoy and appreciate your support. We'll take a quick ad break. We'll see you shortly.